Hello you lovely lot and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here my name is Massa and today I am so excited because I get to play with my books. <laughs> now that might sound like a little bit silly but here is the plan for today's video. I want to make a physical TBR so I want to know exactly what books I own so that when I'm reading or when I'm choosing what to read next I can prioritise the books that I already own over buying in new books or maybe going for my Kindle. So I'm going to be taking all of my books out of the bookcases that they are on and basically having them in a huge pile going through every single one and making a giant physical TBR. That is the first part of the video. Next is the second part. So I saw someone do this on social media and I cannot for the life of me remember who it was so unfortunately I can't credit them but I just saw it online and I just thought it was such a good idea. I'm not gonna let tell you guys what it is yet so it's either gonna be really good and it's gonna help me set out my bookcases in a way that means that I read loads or it's gonna be terrible and it's gonna make me miserable and make it so that I never read. I don't know how it's gonna go. I might do it and then decide that I absolutely hate it and then take all the books back and do it properly again. So I don't know but the first part we're gonna make a physical TBR and then the second part of the video I'm gonna be setting out my bookshelves in a way that I think will help me read more but we'll see. I will have them time stamped down below for you guys so you can check it out if you want to watch me make the physical TBR list or if you want to watch me try and figure out how to set my bookshelves up. Whichever you want to do or if you want to watch the entire thing then awesome let's do this. is terrible but empty bookcases here are where all the books are and here are all of the books that I own just in basically taking up like the entire office um wish me luck okay so phase one complete also if it wasn't obvious, this is not a one day job, this is a two day job, it's already dark outside. So I'm hoping to get as many of the books put onto the list as humanly possible and then continue the rest tomorrow. So I've recently started using Storygraph alongside Goodreads and it's so good. I really like Storygraph just because it gives you so much more like details and stuff like that that like Goodreads just doesn't. But I am going to be putting them onto both Storygraph and Goodreads. Might be easier if I just do like a spreadsheet but we're going to do it this way instead. So wish me luck. I have my laptop and if there's any particular books that I want to talk to you guys about then I'll stop and do that. So 
I'm gonna be probably finding like loads of random books that I forgot I owned. I've just found these two. So when I was 16, I went to LA with my family and I think I went to like Forbidden Planet or somewhere like that where I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? And I found these two books and apparently I bought them. One of them is Wicked, this, Wicked. And it is Witches, Witch and Curse, Nancy Holder and Debbie I'm not going to be able to pronounce that name. I'm so sorry. And then the other one is this one, which is Nightworld by L.J. Smith. And I'm like, I don't even know what these are about. Is this something that I'm ever going to read? Maybe I'll do a shelf of books where if in a year's time I haven't touched them, then I will unhaul them because I've never actually unhauled any books since I started doing like book content so we'll see but these are going on the list could we just go back to the time when I said this was going to be a two-day job and it is in fact honestly I think I don't even know how long ago this was just need to get this video done at this point. So it took a lot longer than I anticipated to get all the books put into Storygraph and Goodreads. Was there probably a better system of me inputting them into two separate websites that didn't take so long? I mean, yeah, probably, but I ended up just inputting everything separately into the two separate things. So it ended up taking a while. But fear not, everything has been inputted and it's honestly a little bit embarrassing. So let me give you some book stats because I love looking at stats and numbers and I'm just going to go with the assumption that honestly everyone else does too. So <laughs> also, like I said, I'm still pretty new to Storygraph. However, given that I haven't been here very long. I haven't been on it for very long at all whatsoever. I think I prefer it to Goodreads. I think I prefer it like quite a lot to Goodreads actually. Like I just found it while I was putting in the books and stuff. It's so much quicker. Goodreads is so slow. It's so incredibly slow and it's just so much easier to like for example mark books as owned. As in I own a physical copy of this thing. It's so much easier to do that on Storygraph and adding them to different like shelves and adding different tags to them is so, so much easier on Storygraph. And I'm like a little bit obsessed with it now. So I'm gonna give you the data from Storygraph. So owned books. Also, before I say this, some of the books I have multiple copies of. So some of them where I could be bothered, I inputted it, but I think it's like, is it? I think it's Kingdom of the Wicked where I own like three separate copies and I was like I don't need to input that because when I mark it as read then I'm not going to be reading three different versions three separate times I'll just be reading the one story. So having said that I thought I didn't own many books and it turns out that I actually own 246 books at the minute which means we are just over 750 books to go to be classed as a library because someone said that you need a thousand books to be a library so I still have a while to go but we are at 246 books now. Here is where it gets embarrassing. Of those 246 books only 19% of them have been read. So 81% of the books I own haven't been read. So that's what's going to lead me into the next part of this video. And that is, I saw something that someone did online about how they were setting out their bookshelves to help them to read more. And I thought it was such a clever idea. So the plan is to have my books all 
facing the wrong way on the bookshelf, if that makes sense. So instead of the spine being out, the spine's gonna be in. Now, me just looking at my bookshelves brings me a lot of joy. My hobby is probably more so buying books than reading books, to be quite honest, but that's besides the point. So looking at my books brings me a lot of joy. I'm just looking over here because this is currently where my bookshelves are. So looking at my books brings me a lot of joy. However, because I've turned the books around, they are not bringing me a lot of joy. So I think this is either going to motivate me to read more of them so I can turn more of them around. Oh my god, this is going to be such a mouth. It's such a mouthful. So I think this is either going to motivate me to read a lot more of the books that I own so that I can turn them around and look at them and be happy with my beautiful, beautiful bookshelves, or it's going to mean that I'm going to forget completely about them and be miserable with my bookshelves. So I think that's a pretty fun little experiment. So I will keep you guys updated on how it's going. I'll show you a clip of how I did it and I will show you guys what my bookshelves look like now. It's embarrassing. When I was doing this it's actually quite embarrassing how few of them I have read. And in case anyone is wondering about how I'm going to be able to know what books are where or all of that, A it's pretty easy to pull books out and look at them if I need to and B I've done it so I sort of know where things are and like based on like the shape of the books and like what books are around them I kind of know where the books that I need are. So yeah let me show you guys the very interesting system that is my bookshelves. One of the issues with my bookcases at the minute is that I need to get extra shelves for them. So just like literally like extra shelves for them. So as you would have seen, the ones at the top, there's like way too much gap. And in order to make my books fit, I've had to put a lot of them in this way around instead of like the normal way around, which is just less aesthetically pleasing but we are doing what we can with the space that we have. So let me take you guys through all my books and show you how I've set them out. Bottom shelf here I have got these stuff over here so that's like non-books basically. We've got dictionaries and journals and like my old bullet journals and things over here and then we go into what is basically my children's books. So this is so cute. This is like the only Iranian children's book that I have and I brought over with me from Iran when I was little and it's a little pop-up book about giants and it's just so adorable. So that is definitely going in the collection to go to my children. I also have this one which I'm like very proud of. And that is, it's called The Persian Princess and it's just, the art is so beautiful. So these I basically haven't read any of them and I'm not sure if I like ever will because I basically have started a book collection for my future children so that's what we've got. These are the special editions of like a couple of classics so we've got this one which is Anne of Green Gables which Again, it's facing this way out, so I've never read it. I have complete works of the Grimm's Brothers, and then these are the Twisted Tales books, where it's different versions of classic 
children's stories or classic Disney stories, I should say. So this one, Straight On Till Morning, is a Captain Hook story. And it says, what if Wendy went to Neverland with Captain Hook instead of Peter Pan? So there is those. There's also these over here, which is basically all the books that I managed to keep from my childhood. So we have The Worst Witch, obviously. I used to really like this book. It's 10 Reasons Not to Fall in Love and One Man to Prove Them All Wrong by Linda Green. I used to love this. I've read it like quite a few times when I was younger. These are all the other way around. So even though I've read them all when I was younger, I do actually want to reread them all and do like a little reading vlog of all of them. So that's why they are this way around. Okay, so this shelf, it starts over this way with all of my Shakespeare plays and then it goes into the rest of my plays. So my Shakespeare plays, I have only read two of them, technically speaking. So properly, I've only read two of them which is Much Ado About Nothing and Macbeth. And then these, it just keeps going into plays. There's a couple that I've read, they're quite small, so it's like difficult to see. Like they're very, very thin, these plays. It's not like chunky books or anything, but very thin, but I have read them, which is a nice change to be honest at this point. So these are all my plays and again I need to read a lot more of them. So these books over here are the ones where I've put them down here and I'm probably just going to forget all about them because I honestly I don't particularly care about them. So these are the books where if in a year's time they are still down here like this then I will quite probably end up unhauling them. Um, I read Shadow and Bone but I DNF'd Siege and Ruin and then what's even the third one called? Ruin and Rising. So what is this? Siege and, Siege and Storm, sorry. I DNF'd Siege and Storm and I haven't read Ruin and Rising but I really like the Netflix show so I'm thinking that maybe I'll give them another go but I would have to be like really in the mood to give them a go because otherwise I'm just not interested. This one is down here because I actually own two copies of it. Um, I own two copies of it because I forgot I had it and I went out and re-bought it. So it's gonna get sold or donated or something along those lines. I also went through a really weird phase in the pandemic where I just bought a lot of contemporaries and like, where is it? So I got Some Kind of Wonderful by Giovanna Fletcher and it's just, I don't know if I'll ever be like a contem- like if it's like contemporary romance then yes by all means but I don't know I've never been like in the mood for them so I don't know if I will ever read them but they're there nonetheless. So down this end I've got the more like educational sort of things I guess. So I've got my like Wicker books and like Luna Living. I also have my acting theory books. I've got a couple of them down this end. And then it goes to biographies and autobiographies and stuff like that. These are the ones that I've read and then it goes into personal development. And then down here, these are my poetry books. So I recently had a family member come over from Iran and they brought me the most gorgeous books. So I've got this, which is classic Persian literature, and it's just old classic Iranian stories, or like Persian stories, I should say. Comes with like gorgeous illustrations. So it has a lot of stories from Iran and like ancient literature and things like that. I also have the Shahnameh, which they kindly brought me, which is the story of kings. And it's just like 
beautiful on the inside absolutely stunning with like gorgeous illustrations like they're just absolutely beautiful so these two are like massive prized possessions of mine at the minute and there's another one which is much much bigger than these guys and that's like all the way at the top so I'll show you that in a second and then this is my little highland cow <laughs> he lives on my bookshelves and this over here these are the lord of the rings books they belonged to my partner and he's had them from like when he was a child i've never read them i do want to read them but i also want to get like pretty editions of them so this level is the one where i've probably read the most books so you've got the kingdom of the wicked and cursed and feared down there so these are the crescent city books which i haven't read obviously akatar and over here is the throne of glass books where i've obviously only read Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight and the rest need to be read still. I feel like the books look so much chunkier when they're this way around and I honestly don't know why. Then we move up on to the fairy loot level of the bookcases. I haven't read any of them and the only reason that this shelf doesn't look as bad as the rest of them is because they all have like the most beautiful sprayed edges so this level actually looks really good doing this method but I haven't read a single one of these which is you know terrible on my part but they still look absolutely gorgeous but they are on my list and I do want to make my way through them so hopefully I'll get through these pretty soonish but who knows because I'm currently on a Kindle kick. Okay, so up here we start over on this end and these are my graphic novels. So Heartstopper 1 and 2 I've read and 3 and 4 I still need to read. The Law Olympus books are unread and these are the Sad Ghost Club books which I still need to read. I've got the physical copies of Zodiac Academy 1 and 2 which I have read both of them. These are my House of Night books, which is what really got me back into reading through the pandemic. I sort of remember these four. I will have read these at some point, but I just cannot for the life of me remember when or what they were about. So they are this way around because I plan on reading the series again at some point. This is the other magical book from Iran that I mentioned and I will take this out and show you guys it properly just because of how beautiful it is. It deserves its own little moment. How gorgeous is that? Like, oh my God. And obviously like the inside of it is absolutely beautiful. So it has it translated into multiple languages and it's just honestly like the most stunning thing that I've probably ever seen. Let me see if I can find one of the illustrations because so I don't know how well you guys can see but it's all it's like the most beautiful gold and like this is some of the illustrations in it like stunning absolutely just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And then over here is again some books that I've got from my younger years I guess. I've got the Beautiful Dead series down here. This is the selection series, these are the last two in the selection series and I honestly don't know if I'll ever read those because I barely made it through the selection series and then I started reading this one and realised it wasn't about the same characters and just absolutely did not care whatsoever. Um, I, God, I don't know what that one is, I think it's part of the Vampire Diaries series. One of Us is Lying, One of Us is Next, I haven't read those either. Moving on to the other shelves. So this shelf is the really, really random I guess shelf where everything else is sort of up here and I couldn't organize it huge amounts because of the spacing like this is so tall it's unnecessarily tall but I've got a lot of I think it's like YA books that are here um I have 
Paybacks at Witch, The Balloon Thief. So all these books I've got over here. I've got The Deathless Girls. I've got Aurora Rising. I've got the Shadow Hunters series over here. I managed to get through the first three books on audiobook and then I just wasn't bothered. I don't know if I wasn't there mentally or if I should try reading them physically. I'm just honestly not too sure. And then other like random books like the ones from the beginning of the video that I randomly bought in America, they're up there as well where I'm not sure if I will ever honestly get to them. And I think, if I'm not wrong, these ones over here are the Game of Thrones books which I don't think I will ever read. Then again down here is some more of the Fairy Loot book box books. So these are the ones where the height is like just a bit shorter. I don't think these are fairy loot. I think these were just like Waterstones exclusive editions. So they're more like YA, so Children of Blood and Bone. Again, these mostly haven't been read. I have obviously read Girl, Serpent, Thorn and the Evolution, Eve of Man and the third book will come out eventually at some point. But I do want to read more of these. I really want to read um, The Ballad of... Is it The Ballad of Never After or is that the second one? Yeah, sorry. Once Upon a Broken Heart and then The Ballad of Never After, I believe, is the second one by Stephanie Garber. I really want to get to this really soon. So I should hopefully be making my way through these. Um, this little guy just sits on my bookshelves and keeps me company. So last but certainly not least is this shelf which has most of my romances on it. It has the Twilight series on it which obviously has been read quite a lot. Like look look at that spine. That is interesting. I did read these before the movies came out but for some reason I got rid of my original cover and kept the movie cover honestly young mass was an idiot obviously the cruel prince series i've read i haven't read this one yet we have the life hypothesis and like love on the brain and all these books down here spanish love deception and they're just other romance books and honestly i don't even know what this is i think it's legend born i'm not gonna try and get them out but this is all of my books. So that is my bookshelves at the minute. It kind of turned into like a bookshelf tour, uh, which I didn't anticipate it turning into, but I really enjoyed telling you guys about my books. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a big ol' thumbs up. If you have any other methods of how to help me read more, then by all means, drop them down in the comments. Do you think this is a stupid method or do you think it might work? I'm curious to see what people think because it's not something that I have seen really before. I saw that one person do it and I immediately thought, genius. I will try and if I can find them link them in the description box but I honestly can't remember where I saw it so it might not happen. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this then hit the subscribe button. I do post videos regularly about books, lifestyle, running a small business, making bookish things to sell, that kind of vibe, then if that sounds like your kind of thing, then do subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the uploads. And yeah, thanks again so much for watching this video and supporting the channel, and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Bye!